Well, after that, I feel so old school. This is paper. I don't know if you're familiar with the medium. Um, and I wrote on it with this device that deposits ink on this thing. Anyway, um, so, but uh, look, it's, it's actually nice to follow that with something, um, you know, something like this. And um, just a language warning. I am going to use the F word um, sort of fairly constantly, um, and that F word is feminism. Um, and I've got two simple messages. One is that feminism needs men, and another is that men need feminism. And the kind of argument I want to make is that we won't make progress. In fact, you won't make progress towards gender equality without men's support. Not because, you know, feminism has neglected men and men are now the victims. Not because women are weak and men can't, and, and women can't do it on their own. But actually because men are the problem. We are the problem. Gender inequality fundamentally is a problem of men and a problem for men. It's a problem of the men in this room. It's a problem for me. It's a problem of every man you know, every man in the country. Ours is a gender unequal society, and I won't show you the footnotes that, you know, establish that, but, you know, let's take that as... And, and often we understand that in terms of female disadvantage, the ways in which women are left out or marginalised or brutalised or stereotyped. But we can flip that and we can look at the ways in which gender inequality is also a story of male privilege. And that privilege is personal. Uh, there are ways in which I, every man in this room, every man in, in Australia in various ways does sexism, reproduces gender inequalities. Now, I'm a nice guy, you know, the men in this room, I'm sure you're nice guys too. I've not engaged in the bluntest forms of men's power against women. I've not forced a woman into sex. I've not assaulted a woman. But there's a myriad of ways in which I and other men do sexism in our everyday lives, ways in which we maintain gender inequalities. I've, at meetings like this, walked out and left women to do the washing up and, and the tidying. I've whined and whinged when a girlfriend didn't want sex. I've looked at porn, which shows women in callous ways, and I've let mates' sexist comments go unchallenged. Even when we're not actively doing sexism, we benefit. We benefit from privilege. When I or other men open our mouths, we're listened to more, given more authority than women. Um, when a man sends in his CV or goes for a job interview, he's seen as more competent um, than a woman with the same skills, the same experience. When a man is highly sexually active, he may earn status. He certainly doesn't cost his reputation. When a man turns on the TV or reads the news, typically he sees other members of his sex. Their, their representations are everywhere. Their achievements are celebrated. But this privilege is naturalised. It's normalised. And so members of privileged groups, men like me, who are white, heterosexual, middle class, able-bodied, first world, got every form of privilege there is, I think. And it's beautiful. It's lovely, actually. Um, well, no, it certainly, it certainly has benefits. The members of privileged groups, and I'm sure many of you are members of privileged groups in various ways, Somehow we think, because privilege is natural, it's normal, that our achievements, our successes, are the result of our skills, our efforts, and not the unearned advantages of an unequal system. Gender inequality, fundamentally, is men's problem. Yes, there are ways in which women, too, prop up those inequalities, but the bigger problem is men's. So feminism needs men. It needs men to change. It needs men to make change. Feminism needs men, but men need feminism. Men need feminism because without it, we will be stuck in an act like a man box, stuck in narrow, suffocating gender roles, which are unhealthy, which are dangerous, which are limiting for men and harmful for women, like a coffin, really. And, you know, written on the side of this box are some dodgy messages, messages that feminism has been scrubbing out or writing over, messages like boys don't cry, violence is an okay way to solve problems, uh, men are lords of the households, gay is bad, women are second class citizens. Those messages limit men, they hurt women. Feminism frees men from that. Feminism is anti-sexist, not anti-male, and feminism calls for gender equality, for gender justice, for gender multiculturalism. Feminism is good for men. It's good for men's health, men who buy into that traditional model. Men should be 10 feet tall and bulletproof. They're more likely to turn up in hospital to pay costs in injuries and death and so on. Feminism is good for men's working and family lives. It gives men choices like it gives women choices. It frees men from the expectation that we will have to be the breadwinners and miss out on parenting and family life. Feminism is good for friendships. It enriches men's friendships with other men, makes, them more, um, makes it possible for those to be more supportive, more playful, more intimate, and men's friendships with women too. Feminism is good for men's and women's sex lives too. Feminist women have better sex. Again, I can footnote this, but I won't. Um, <laughs> but you know, there's research. Um, feminist women have better sex because they're more assertive, they're more in touch with their own pleasure and their bodies, and they're better ex expressing both their desires and their sexual limits. And the male partners of those feminist women, if they have male partners, they tend to be feminist too, they have better sex as well, partly because they're having sex with those women, but also because they're good at establishing consent, because they can do intimacy and because they respect women. 
so feminist women and feminist men have better sex. So, um, you know, the women in this room, you and, you know, women around Australia are growing up with kind of confident expectations of gender equality. You expect the same rights and opportunities as the men around you, but you won't see that. You won't live that gender equality unless and until men change too. Feminism needs men, men need feminism. So what to do? For, for women, I think expect more of men, demand more of men, raise the bar for what it means to be a nice guy, a decent bloke. For men, get your own house in order, do your shit work, start living every day as if gender equality really mattered. Second, speak up and step in. Speak up when your mates say dodgy, sexist things. Challenge the attitudes and behaviours around you that feed into sexism, that feed into violence. Third, make noise and make trouble. Join the feminist and pro-feminist groups and movements dedicated to building gender equality and ending violence. Become an activist, change the world. Thanks.